following message is a presentation of Valley Metro Church, a community of believers dedicated to knowing God and making Him known. As, as a human race, we have been able to accomplish some uh, pretty amazing things. You know, we send people to the moon and we do a lot of great things. And when we put our mind to it, there's a lot that we can actually get done. But then there's, there's other things that no matter how hard we try, we seem to fall short. Would you guys ever agree? You ever try and try and you still kind of fall short? Yeah, we, we, we come up short sometimes. Um, in fact, you look at baseball players and you can have some of the greatest baseball players on the planet. And uh, even the best baseball players are usually out seven out of ten times they go to bat. We're calling this the spiritual facts of life. Romans uh, is the book that changed the world. Uh, there was revival as a result of this book. Uh, there has been reformation. The whole church, the history has changed in modern day in society and throughout the world because of the content in this book. A lot of it from Romans chapter 3. It starts out, what advantage then is there in being a Jew? Or what value is there in circumcision? Much in every way. First of all, they have been entrusted with the very words of God. What if some did not have faith? Will their lack of faith nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true and every man a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. This is the oracles of God right here. All scripture, spirit breathed. No prophecy of scripture came apart by someone's interpretation, but men were moved by the Holy Spirit as he pushed their pen. God imported all scripture, spirit breathed. Spirit of God. These are oracles. And what's important about that is to go through life with the oracles of God compared to going through life without the oracles of God has a profound different difference in truth, direction. It certainly has a profound difference in understanding the spiritual facts of life. A first point this morning, if you're a note taker on the spiritual facts of life, is that God has spoken and now we possess the very oracles of God. If you get one thing today, know that these are the oracles and pray that God makes them come alive to you because this is the gift that keeps on giving. It's alive and it keeps on speaking into your life. It cuts between, just like bone and marrow can be cut with, a, with maybe a razor, the word of God can cut between our thoughts, our emotions, our motives, God's truth. He can, the stuff that we're trying to figure out, God can, God can slice it for you and make it really clear. He can kind of fillet all the issues in life God can fillet them and lay them right out so you go, oh, that's truth, that's not, that's purpose, that's hope, that's not, that's doubt. He can, the whole assortment of everything in your life, the word of God can begin to clarify these things. These are the oracles of God. Let God be true and every man a liar. To be absolute truth, it's gotta be true for all people in all places at all times. God's word is that way. God's word, these are the oracles of God and they are true and the reality is when folks have opinions based on their own so-called truths, um, they're really walking outside of the spiritual facts of life. It goes on to say, but if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust, unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I am using a human argument. Certainly not. If that were so, how could God judge the world? Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as we are being slanderously, slanderously reported as saying, as some claim that we say, let us do evil that good may result. Their condemnation is deserved. What shall we conclude then? Are we any better? Not at all. We have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, no, not one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their thongs, tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Um, the Bible is saying that we're all in the same boat. We all come up short. We're all sinners. And that's our second point this morning. We're all sinners that need a savior. We are all sinners that need a savior. But let's agree with one thing. We are all sinners, guys. 
and we all need a savior as a result. This goes on in verse 19, and it says, now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law, rather through the law, we become conscious conscious of sin. And he comes to this conclusion, and this is an important one, that one day when we're all accountable to God, in the end, when things wrapped up, there's gonna be something about our position. There's gonna be something, that there's gonna be a verdict given. And and the verdict at this point, in in the text right here, and the news starts getting really good in a minute, but at this point right here, the verdict is that no one is declared righteous. In other words, when you go before the judge, and he slams the gavel down, he's gonna say righteous or not righteous, and at this point in the story with the true human condition, no one is righteous. Even the Jews that try to follow the law, even you and I that try to do good more, more good deeds than bad, even you and I, if we think our scales are tilted more one way than the other, none of us are righteous. Uh, in God's economy, there's no appeal process. It's not like on earth, well, I'm guilty, well, let me appeal it. Let me come up with a better argument. Let me try to come up with a better defense. It doesn't work that way in God's economy. Uh, There's no appeal process. The verdict is this, and that's the bad news. And that's, this is what makes this really exciting is verse 21. This is where the good news comes in. And we're gonna go through this pretty quickly. The bad news is that we have this verdict. Verse 21, but now a righteousness from God apart from the law has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time. So as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. On what principle? On that of of observing the law? No, but on that of faith. We maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. This was a revolutionary statement in his day. Is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too. Since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through the same faith. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. The blood of Jesus was the most powerful element that the universe had ever seen in the history of civilizations. Every drop that was hitting the ground had more power than atomic bombs in the spiritual realm. Because every drop that was dropping was taken away hundreds of thousands and millions and billions of sins. And that's the reality about restoring us to a place of being righteous with God is that it was through the blood. This says all who come through faith and it says faith in his blood. Our failures don't have to be fatal. Uh, There are failures, but they don't have to be fatal because of what Jesus did. Uh, Without him in our own economy, unfortunately, our failures will be fatal according to the oracles of God, Uh, but they don't have to be. God doesn't want them to be. He doesn't want anyone's failures to be fatal, and that's why he, he sent his son like this. But I would just suggest to you that this reality of justification, you and I being justified, revivals have started over this, reformation has started over stuff like this, and God is looking for some reformers today, guys. He's looking for some revivalists today. He's looking for people who understand uh, how this works because some have no idea that Jesus really takes a place, that Jesus puts you back to a different position, that he on the inside puts you back like Adam before the fall, that you're just as if you'd never sinned. People are like, seriously? I didn't know that. That's why it starts revivals because it changes your whole position. Before that, You couldn't even go up into the temple and walk into the presence of God. Nobody could because you weren't justified. But now we can come boldly before his throne. There are some radical dimensions in the spiritual realm that you and I have available to us simply because we're justified. We're gonna be talking about some of these 
aspects of our new positions, our new conditions in weeks to come. Again, today was the bad news before the good news, but these are the spiritual facts according to the oracles of God. This has been a presentation of Valley Metro Church. To hear more messages or to support future podcasts, please visit valleymetrochurch.com.